Hello, welcome to BioGrade TV. If you are new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. How Angola Gained Independence Angola gained her independence from Portugal on the 11th of November 1975. This was after 14 years, 1961 to 1974. The three major movements involved in the Angolan War of Independence are Movimento Popular de Liberation de Angola MPLA, the Front for the National Liberation of Angola FLNA, and National Union for Total Independence of Angola UNITA. The Portuguese entered the land in 1482 when the Kingdom of Portugal, led by navigator Diogo Cao, arrived in Kingdom of Congo in the present-day Northern Angola. The Portuguese brought technological tools unknown to the inhabitants and a new religion, Christianity in exchange for slaves, ivory and minerals offered by the King of Congo. In 1575, the present-day Angola capital, Luanda, was founded by Paulo Dias de Navais. He gained ground in the land as he lived with many of the colonists and his 400 soldiers. More lands as well as forts and ports were occupied by the Portuguese. Notable among them was Bengula, which was controlled by them. By 1605, Luanda has upgraded from a small fortified settlement to a status of a city. The Portuguese were resisted by some locals when they invaded. Nzinga Mbandi, a local ruler in particular, resisted the Portuguese with great determination. There were a series of wars, treaties, and disputes with the Portuguese in this period, but the Portuguese overpowered them. The Portuguese did slave trade, shipping thousands of Angolan slaves to Brazil in exchange for Brazilian plantations. The local slave traders provided slaves from the interior and exchanged for many European products. The slave trade continued in most parts of Angolan territories except for some parts that proved difficult due to famine and epidemic disease. The slave trade was however abolished in the mid-19th century. Angola is a large territory, the seventh largest in Africa but with a very low population density then. The population began to increase as there were more whites, mixed races and the black inhabitants. The whites, mainly Portuguese, were the superior in the authority. This was backed by the Portuguese government who ratified the Portuguese Colonial Act in 1933. No matter the level of academic pursued by the locals, they were still inferior to the colonial masters. However, in 1948, Angolan activists sent a letter to the United Nations seeking to have its own government. Portuguese government therefore encouraged migrants from Europe to settle in its territories. The territory was now declared as province with other Portuguese dominated lands such as Mozambique, Cape Verde, Guinea Bissau, Sao Tome, and Principe by the Portuguese parliament on the 11th of June 1951. The educated and urban Angolans began forming socialist resistance thereafter. They began anti colonial agitation, launching attacks on the government facilities as well as whites in the territory. The Angolan War of Independence began in 1961 when native Angolans began protest against the colonial philosophy of forced cotton cultivation. The Union of Peoples of Africa UPA, launched an attack in one of the Angolan territories. Forces took farms, government outposts and trading centers, killing and mutilating officials. The liberation movements of MPLA, FLNA and UNITA were formed at different times with support from foreign countries. They all took up their arms for independence with series of attacks. Many people were massacred during the Angolan War of Independence. At least 5,000 persons died in a massacre between 3rd to 4th of January 1961, carried out by Portuguese soldiers. The settlers carried out nightly raids in the slums surrounding the white neighborhoods in retaliation. There were also bombings in the regions, destroying 17 villages and killing 20,000 civilians. About 100,000 people were killed in the first eight months in 1961. 
the number of death toll increased as many atrocities were committed by all forces involved in the conflict. In the end, the Portuguese were victorious and most of the Angolan territories were under their control. A domestic coup within Portugal, known as the Carnation Revolution of April 25, 1975, ended the Portuguese colonial war in Angola. The conflict has effects on the Portuguese economy. The Portuguese armed forces also believed they couldn't defeat the relentless insurgents in the colonies. The military asked the then Portuguese government of Estado Novo and stalled all military activities in Africa. The new government immediately began plans to grant Angola independence. In Angola, the three movements, Movimiento Popular de Liberación of Angola MPLA, the Front for the National Liberation of Angola FLNA, and National Union of Total Independence UNITA, used the seized moment to negotiate with the new Portuguese government. On the 5th of January 1975, the three liberation movements held one of their meetings in Mombasa, Kenya. They agreed to stop fighting each other and also made new constitution with the Portuguese. The Angolans also met with the Portuguese government officials in Alvo, Portugal on the 10th of January 1975 and on the 5th of January, they signed an agreement known as Alvo Agreement. The agreement recognized all three liberation movements as a sole legitimate representatives of the people of Angola. The Angola independence was therefore gained on the 11th of November 1975, leading to a transitional government. What have we missed out on this history? Let us know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.